So, first and foremost, guys, welcome to the channel again. Another interview about the KFC Mini Cricket Sem Seminar. But we're here with Sonala Jafta, and we're going to probably ask a lot more other questions too. Because yes. when we sit down to chat, we chat. <laughs> so, uh, first and foremost, I want to ask you about your experience at the seminar. Um, there's been some excellent stories, particularly from you as well as and Buren. But uh, other than that, I mean, there's so many coaches that are here at the seminar and giving their. They've asked you questions. They've given their advice to some of us when we're talking off camera. I'm really inspired by a lot of their vision. But for you, KFC Mini Cricket as a platform, as a stage for the next generation, what is your thoughts on that initiative? Um, you know, one of the stories for me from all the coaches is humble because they do it for the love. Yeah. Um, and just listening, I was chatting to one and like just telling me about these kids that like they can see the goal, and I'm like, well, let's see, like a few years from now, and I think. But what they're doing with mini cricket, they're like you have to commend KFC because now we're bridging the gap yeah. um, from the transition. Now we're actually going to have like primary schools cricket where I don't think primary schools cricket because they didn't have it for girls. But now you have it, and now yes, the growth is endless. Yeah. I mean, it's not about talent in this country. It's just about giving them an opportunity, mm -hmm. players an opportunity, and kids the opportunity. Do you feel that the mini cricket program is doing that for our young generation? Oh, I feel like they've been doing it for years. We look at um, some of our players that came through the program, Nungulu um, Lagumlaro, Dumi. Yeah. We tend to forget that they came through the same program. Exactly. And now you have players to go off. And now you ask, is the program okay? I'm like, oh no, it's brilliant. <laughs> it's brilliant. It's a brilliant program. Yeah. Excellent. And having a brand like KFC attached to it, I mean, we see them on all the banners, you know, for the T20 games, etc., for the men's game, women's game, etc. So, having a brand like KFC um, attached to this particular thing, what do you feel about them and what they've done as a sponsorship? I feel like KFC is smart. What <laughs> kid doesn't like KFC? Dude, if you told me you're going to give me KFC to come play cricket, I'm there 100%. Let me teach me how to bowl. Um, I think from them, you have to commend them for yeah. their role that they bring to Cricket South Africa. Obviously, they, they do support like um, the national teams and like you see the buckets and the games and you know um, the work that they're doing, even behind the scenes, I feel like, is they're helping Cricket South Africa massively in the growth of these young individuals yeah. coming up here. So, let's talk about some of the coaches that influenced you as a kid. Um, maybe that can inspire some other youngsters out there, the next amount of after maybe. Mm. Um, I mentioned Angelique Ta, uh, my first ever career coach, funny enough. Um, she's the one that actually gave me the gloves. Um, oh, we didn't like each other very long. I was like, well, I want to be a bowler, you know. I thought I'd be a bowler. And then she's like, nah, you know, short. We can keep a goal. And I was like, okay, I'll take it. And then there was Roger for the map, where he's now head coach of Namibia Women's. Um, when I was first year in university, um, and I wanted nothing to do with cricket, he hunted me down. I was like, okay, okay, I'm coming. And then that's where the cricket journey came in um, with Book and then saying, you know what, I might have a shot professionally. Um, had a few hockey coaches actually, Mark Taliad, but he also coached uh, cricket at Dale. Yeah. And when I look at that man, I'm like, thank you. Because not only did he shape just my cricket or hockey, he shaped my whole perspective on just being professional and always working hard and you can't give anyone a snuff mm -hmm. of what. Because if you're number one, you want to be number one and yeah. you can't let it go. It's quite a few things you said there that I really want to go deep okay. with. Uh, particularly with wicket keeping, let's start there first. Because wicket keeping is something like I've spoken to uh, uh, Ezra Poole on mm -hmm. many occasions about wicket keeping, about how, what is a wicket keeper's journey? Because ultimately, for you it was different, you were the strong and gloves. But I've heard that pattern a lot. You know? But I think, I think coaches know when someone's meant to be a keeper. Okay. Um, you do get, I feel like you do, when someone doesn't want to do something, just know if your coach picks up in your patterns and everything and they give you the thing. It's not coming from a, we don't have anyone else. They're like, oh, very agile with hockey. I was very, very agile. Mm. So I think maybe she saw that my hand eye coordination was going to be top because of hockey. And I think when Angie gave it to me, I sucked. I'm sorry for my language, but I was bad. Oh man, I was bad. <laughs> I remember that first, that first two months, I was like, Ayabonga Kaka was boiling to me, like, oh man. Even I started laughing, I was like, I have disease. Like, you know, I used to bowl, but she used to bowl Jaffers, you know, and I'm, I'm trying to catch it. Oh, I got pinned. So it's. <laughs> so I had like a national week in Joburg. I was like, I'm gonna make the team because there's no other keeper. I was like, she's. No, I'm gonna make myself look 
terrible. Yeah. I get this. Yeah, and it's nothing of a custom dog. What do you expect? Yeah. Yeah, I am sneaking the ball, man. I follow the line, but it goes this way. I follow this line, it goes that way. I was like, I look at it, I was like, I don't know what to do now. And then I think when I got back, I was like, no. And then Tani's asked me, like, my coach, my okay, coach, how did you do? I couldn't tell him anything. I was like, it's okay. He's like, fine, I'll call someone. Call that a very dozen. So then he used to, like, we used to train hockey. But then he used to go hockey and keep it. So it's no longer that thing of me hitting, mm. hitting hockey balls. It was letting me catch throughout hockey season. In fact. And then by the time I came back, Mary 10, completely different player. Crazy. Um, but then the thing that means that like, he just took the time. Yeah. And he knew that I stayed in Moscow, so I didn't cut and didn't have any way to go. So it's like, he says, let's go to the training. I'm like, <laughs> I'm coming. So what he did was amazing because when I never looked back. And then in grade 10, I was like, I started getting confidence. Yeah. And then by the time I was in the trick, I was in number one rank with the people in schools. And he asked me, so I was like, yeah, that's when the switch happens. Like, hmm? Okay. But we know that the batting side of it is very important as a, as a weekly game, but it's, it's you and all around the ultimate. So give some tips to some of the youngsters out there on the batting and how to, how to balance the two between weekly game and that. Um, I only recently like learned that properly now because um, I always thought that. I need to keep, I need to keep, and then I bet like this, yeah. and then I need to bet, I need to bet. So you know when yeah, you're doing well with your keeping, your bet is not great, and then you're like, your keeping's bad, and then your bet is like, and then I was like, wait, I need to find the balance. And it was just speaking to coach, so if you go, let's say you have 45 like, hour, you have to go 30, 30, yeah. because it's two skills. Yeah, same. You can't go 15 and then 45 with batting, because it, it's nice. Yeah. It's both your role, yeah. like at what coach Clay and I do well, there's, we, we go less with uh, keeping because I just needed to touch up on my batting, but it was never less than 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. And then we did more um, uh, uh, batting. And I mean, when I was batting in the career, when I was like, oh. Yeah. It was just that mental switch, yeah. yeah. So, we know there's a World Cup coming up currently for South Africa, and for both aspects, obviously. The, the T20 Women's World Cup is around the corner as well. I mean, the men's one is seven right on our doorstep. But when it comes to the mental side of the game, um, being left out of teams, being selected and not being selected, how do you deal with that? Because I think every kid faces that on a daily basis at school level. Maybe they get dropped from the A team into the B team. Sometimes I've seen kids drop to C team and then try to work their way back up. And sometimes they just can't get over that hurdle. Yeah, it's just the mental hurdle. Yeah. And I think, yo, I never experienced like being dropped in hockey pop, like cricket humble. I was so used to like always being that first on the team sheet and then when I came to cricket I was well nationally mm. it was more that thing I was like oh, I don't want and then for me I took that hard because I was like but I've always been the best I've always been the best and like now it's like no you have to work for it and I mean Trisha Chet has been there for years um, she's all, she's like my idol and I mean I'm playing with her like yeah, you can imagine same. that it's like and what I do what I did well about not being picked is like I watched her she carries like herself on the field how she keeps and then from there you kind of go back and you implement it and i will say she's helped me a lot with my game because we actually do speak we speak a lot That's about exactly. our games and stuff and then um just that disappointment it's basically up to you as a player like how bad do you want it yes you might not get over the mental hurdle but that's where coaches come in if we see a kid yes you might have dropped him from a to c but what are you doing? Are you following up on the player mm. as a coach? Are you following up to see are they actually improving? Yeah. Um, and I think coaches play a big role. Um, you can't drop from A to C and not follow up. Yeah. You're going to lose a kid in the system. It's true. And when I've spoken to other women players as well, it's the, the drive to want to play professionally because for a long time it wasn't professional. And, and still to the, today, there's, there's not a lot of opportunities for, for you to make money with the, with the sport. I miss you nationally contracted playing in the major tournaments around the world. So how do you stay motivated? No, one thing about me, hockey told me you don't play for money. <laughs> um, for me, it's a, it's a reward to get a contract, but I mean, that doesn't drive me. The, the one thing that drives me is just to win games for the team. Um, even though we lose, at least I like, kept the character in losing. And that's one thing that I always live by. The rest will look after itself. Like, whatever happens, financial benefits and whatever that will look after itself as long as you make sure you're going this way this should be growing when you're going that way so it's, it goes hand in hand the better you do the more money it's in life yeah. if you have a job the better you do yeah. you get more money i think we shouldn't think about like the financial implications until we actually 
set things right. Awesome. Your goals for the season? Goals. Work hard. The major goal is to just go to the World Cup. Um, but then after that, I think it's just keeping focus. Have you had touch with Ethan Marine about that? Then? Yeah. i um, been working a lot on my mental health. been seeing psychologists like maybe twice every month, yeah, three yeah. times a month. Um, just to refresh, it's not more to grab a new bad it's more like to just say, okay, this is where I'm at, yeah. mentally. Um, worked quite a lot in the Caribbean now. Yeah. Uh, we did speak, because obviously not playing, it does yeah. play a mental role. And obviously, when you do get the opportunity, you're immediately prepped <laughs> to yeah. play. So I think that's the one thing, like make the World Cup, but also be physically, mentally, just emotionally correct. Just give some insight into some of cricketers out there because some there's a stigma around mental health. There's a stigma around um, psychologists and psychologists. And I face that I'm, sometimes I go through a mental slump and I'm too afraid to actually tell people that I'm struggling, you know. And for players out there, maybe young players as well, oh, they, they, they struggle to maybe come out of that and speak about it. How does the psychology actually help you? Now, I think before Eugene, I lost myself. Um, I had no drive. Trust sure. me, this year. Yeah. And That's we great. came in from a brilliant tour. But I think I was just so taxed mentally from captain inside of Bangladesh and losing everything and you're like, oh, I'm a bad player. And I mean, mentally I was taxed. I was taxed and then I remember I had an injury straight after that. I was sure. gone. And Sorry. coach, I remember they called me and I was like, Jeff, what's going on? I was like, coach, I don't know. And it wasn't the thing of I wasn't impressed. It was just a struggle to actually wake up and like, yeah. that's who I was for like probably three weeks. And then they're like, no, no. And then as soon as I started seeing Eugene, then obviously you're just stepping up. And then when I look back at like, that was three months ago, and I look back and I'm like, you are so far gone. Yeah. And I imagine I'm not the only one. <laughs> Think about it, I'm not the only one. It's just that I, was, I wasn't afraid to be like, okay, I need help. Yeah. And it's not because I was a bad person or a bad player. I think just, I was gassed out. Yeah. I was meant to be gassed out. So Sanala, thanks a lot. That was excellent insight. Good luck to the rest of the team.